What's up YouTube? I'm Dylan Whittemore with Heritage Woodworks and welcome to my very first video. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to tell a little bit about myself. First off, I'm a born again Christian and I believe that Christ came to this earth, lived a perfect life and died on the cross for our sins. Second, I am a father and a husband. Uh, and thirdly, my day job is I'm a fireman here in North Carolina. In this video and the videos to come, uh, I wanted to have a biblical application to it. Uh, Paul says in his Gospels that to pray without ceasing, and what I believe that means is do everything unto the Lord and try and see God in everything that you do. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. So. Before we get started, let's pray, and then we'll go down and work on this bed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you gave to us. Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and what he did on the cross for our sins. Uh, Lord, just be with this, be with me, be with this video that I'll put out. I pray that somebody will watch it and listen to it and possibly even come to know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord. Uh, be with all of the woodworkers that go down into their shops and use the uh, big saws and everything. Keep us safe. Uh, and thank you for all that you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go make some saw dust. All right, let's get this bed started. This is going to be a castle joint style bed. This is also a king size bed. So, just like any other good woodworking video let's get the lumber out of the truck and into the shop now the place i got this lumber from is a local hardwood store and i got eight quarter cherry eight quarter being two inches thick right here i'm just breaking it down i'm cutting down for the legs and the lumber that i got is already surfaced on four sides so all four sides, they've already planed it down, cut it straight and everything. But if it sits in my shop for a day or two, the moisture content could change and it could twist or warp or whatever. So there I was just getting a straight edge on one edge of these boards because the jointer is a six inch jointer and this board was way too uh, wide for it. So I needed this straight edge to be able to rip down the boards for the legs. And I'll rip them down at an approximate width just outside the width that I actually need. That way I can come back and square up the glue joint with the faces of each leg. There that you saw me measure that last piece, that will be used later on. Uh, they actually came out perfect size for the middle brace uh, that's going to go down the middle of the bed and use those for the leg. Next will be the glue up of all the boards that... You saw me rip down and join, uh, but unfortunately my phone ran out of space and I didn't get the entire glue up. But once the glue is dried, I can take them out of the clamps and uh, take them back to the joiner to have those glue joints jointed flat. I had plenty of squeeze out, so only cleaned up one side of each of these uh, legs just so I could put the back through the planer, uh, thing this planer, and once I finish with the joiner, I measure to make sure I had plenty of room to stick them in there. Uh, I need to go up to four and three quarters of an inch, so I messed up there. That was a close one. There we go. And then once I get that straight, I get one, two, three, and four legs through the planer and they are all to width now the middle board you see sticking out the bottom i know is not exactly the distance from the top so here i'm just cutting it to size so the sides and the footboards of the bed will sit down there flush with that top uh, then i'll go and measure for the other side of the castle joint and i just took it to the bandsaw I figure this would be the easiest way to cut 
the other side of this joint. I do have a dado stack, but it's on a 10 inch saw. The dado stack is only 8 inches, so there will be nowhere near the depth I would need to cut this joint. So I figured this would be the easiest and just to cut it all in one pass there. So then I made a template to the width of what the sides and the foot boards are going to be and did the old painter's tape and super glue trick and took my router bit and went around to make all the edges straight and flush. This of course had to be done in two steps because the router bit was not long enough. So just like that I got all four legs, all the castle joints made and then of course the rounded router bit left rounded corners so I had to square those off. And this is actually one of my favorite parts of any project is using hand tools. Uh, I do want to get into working with hand planes and things so as I progress and get better that's my goal. Then I measure I think about an inch down from the bottom of the joint and then an inch inwards from the bottom to make the tapers for the legs. Now you can do this one of a million different ways. Uh, that old table saw I got is a Delta contractor saw. It takes me a very long time to set the fence so I thought the easiest way to do this is just mark it and then cut it very, very close on the bandsaw. Now, the bandsaw is going to leave blade marks, so I had to sand it down. I, like I said, I need to get a hand plane. I think it will be easier to do this with. Now, I know no one likes to neither sand or watch other people do the sanding, so I won't bore you too much with it. As I said before, I'd like to talk a little about God's Word in my videos as part of the pray without ceasing concept and I think this is a good spot to start for my first video I thought I'd start from the beginning and go over sin and why we need the blood of Christ when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate the fruit of the tree he had commanded them not to eat of sin entered into the world therefore everyone that has come or will come after them is bored with sin Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 tells us the penalty of sin, for the wages of sin is death. I know that is hard to hear. No one likes to be told they are wrong, much less be called a sinner. I know I don't, but it's the truth. And there is good news, great news, actually. The second half of Romans 3.23 says, But the gift of God is eternal life. So even though we sinned against the Almighty God of all creation, He loved His creation so much, He made a way for us to be saved from our sin. John 3.16 sums this up very well. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Back before Christ, God commissioned the Israelites to sacrifice animals, and their blood would cover their sin. But it was only temporary. Christ's blood is eternal. This is why we don't sacrifice anymore. After we admit we are sinners and believe that Christ died for ourselves, Christ will make intercession for us. Basically, this means he will tell God, God the Father, that Dylan Whittemore is covered by the blood that I shed and his sins have been forgiven. Now, even though we have accepted Christ and now are made perfect in God's eyes, we are still sinners here on the earth, this earth. So what is the point I'm trying to make with the little bit of sanding and the cutting away and everything? Even though we still sin, the more we pray and study God's word and get to know Christ better, all those flaws are sanded and cut away. All those habits we had that were not good slowly go away and he molds us and shapes us to be more like him. So Christ can stand out through us. That's the point with the sanding. We are sanding away all the imperfections, the saw blade marks, so the beauty of this lumber can stand out. Okay, so I hope that was beneficial to everybody, and I hope you were able to see what I was meaning by the praying without ceasing concept, uh, seeing the Lord and what we do every day and doing everything we are doing to the Lord every day. 
as I was talking about that, you saw me cut down the boards for the sides and the headboard and footboard, and then come back and clean out all the knots. I filled the knots with the epoxy and mixed a matte black tint to it to try and match all the little black pits and marks in the this cherry. So to measure the distance for the legs, I just set the, the legs up, measured from the outside to outside, and got my uh, dimensions. Then I marked out for the joints for these half laps and uh, marked exactly that halfway across these boards so they will fit flush from on the top. I want this channel to also show mistakes because none of us are perfect. My first mistake was this right here while I was using the uh, jigsaw. Nothing against the jigsaw or anything in this rigid. I believe a good one is comfortable in your hand. It works well. But the problem with all jigsaws is that the blade will sometimes flex on the bottom side. So here in a little bit, you will see what I mean and what it did. Um, now this is my first dry fit. Uh, for this bed and this is my second mistake that I'll make and if you have to use a mallet of some kind to make your joints fit it's never good and you can see that right there on the bottom right corner that right there broke so I had to take the time to go back and fix it I glued it up clamped it and uh, came back and sanded the uh, glue down the joint and really you can't really see the uh, crease that it made. In fact, you will never see it because the castle joint on the legs will cover it up. It will be on the inside of that joint. So after I got it all fit and everything uh, nice, I came back and now I'm gluing up what I call the side rails. The side rails are just a one inch by one inch I believe or one and a half inch by one and a half inch and where this is going is going to go on the sides and the footboard headboard all the way around the bed so I just used a little bit of glue and then just a few clamps maybe more than a few clamps once I got all these clamped up uh, I did come back with a cloth and tried to get as much glue off of the top as possible. And of course I did this on all four sides. And here is kind of a view after I glued it up. I hadn't uh, sanded these down or anything yet. Uh, but you can kind of see what it's going to look like. Now, this is where I was going to show you what happened with that jigsaw. That corner looked pretty good. But this one here, you can see that the gap is at an angle. So is that one a little bit. It's not as bad, but still there. And then it happened on this corner as well. So three out of four corners did not come out very well. So what I did here was I took my flush trim bit, which is straight, put the corner that was at an angle face down. And that bearing on the flush trim bit will ride the bottom, which will make everything straight. Once the diagonal gap is straight, I then went back and measured the gap and then cut thin strips of wood to fill that gap. Uh, what I did with the wood was I came and glued it to the inside of the half lap joint of each of the corners that were bad. And this actually worked pretty well. It did not look perfect, as you can see there. I could not find uh, a good color match and grain match to it, but it looks a lot better than a gap that's at an angle and really wide. So here, once again, I get all four corners uh, where they need to be and dry fit them together. And there we go now that slid in really nicely instead of having to beat it with a mallet and break the ends so then i went back and ripped down some boards for the side braces and what i did was i just glued it again uh, glue is very strong and then tacked it in place with some brad nails 
and then here I am uh, pre-drilling and then I'm going to take several screws and screw them to the sides and I did this to both sides. Now the middle or the footboard and headboard will get a brace that will go down the middle of the bed which you'll see in a little bit but they get a little bracket which I measured out and cut from some scraps. Now as you can see my shop or should I say my grandfather's shop he's graciously let me use it. It's a little bit small with a bunch of junk that's been accumulated over many many years is a tad bit small so my dry fit had to be put around the table saw and the jointer so I had to take this project up to the garage where I would have enough room to measure for this middle brace uh, here my next mistake was I put the braces or the brackets on the sides uh, flush with the bottom of the boards they needed to be installed a half inch up so they the slats going across would everything would be level and flush with that middle brace uh, so that's what I'm measuring here for and luckily I had a couple of pieces uh, that were exactly a half inch from scrap from where I ripped down the sides and here I'm just measuring also for the legs while I do that so there's the half inch pieces I just once again glued, brad nailed, and screwed to the uh, braces that I have put on there uh, by mistake. And then uh, after I did that and I cut, came back down and cut for the legs for the middle brace, I went ahead and rounded over the outside corner of each of these legs. I just used this palm router with I think a half inch round over, I believe is what it was. It's not as big of a roundover as a typical castle joint bed would be, but I still think it looked pretty good. Now, a lot of these beds have a thumb screw to keep the middle brace uh, attached to the headboard and footboard. Uh, a lot of them that I've seen are, are pretty big and bulky that are just hand tightened. Uh, so what I decided was to do something a little smaller and more, a little more simpler. So I bought just a set of screws and threaded inserts from Amazon. Of course, they were black. That way, everything would match. The black hardware would match the black resin, which matches the black grain in the cherry and the little round, I call them pits, the little round specks that are inside this lumber. What I did was I drilled through the footboard and into the middle brace. That way I know where to drill into the, the brace for the threaded inserts. Once I did that, I was able to screw through both boards and pull it in nice and tight. So I did the same thing with the headboard, and now I'm going to attach the feet that are going down the middle. I decided to do the same thing. So I drill through both boards, put the insert in, and screw the screw through both boards. Uh, here, once again, the popular Rubio Monaco is what I'm going to be finishing this bed with. Uh, I think it brings out the grain and color very nicely. It has a nice finish for this cherry. Now let's go back to the Word of God and what we had talked about. Christ dying on the cross for our sins. When he sacrificed himself and gave up his blood for our sins and we accept that and ask him into our hearts, the Bible says that he will change our dark hearts and turn them into white as snow. And that blood that he sacrificed will stain that as a red crimson stain, just like this finish or any other finish or stain that uh, we change the color of the wood. We put the finishes on the wood to bring out uh, the beauty of that wood and uh, even if it's not perfect we see the beauty of the grain and the color of the lumber that he created so therefore the blood of Christ does this same concept to God the Father so that we can be acceptable to him that one day we will be able to live in heaven with him and with our Lord and Savior well we made it to the end of the video 
here's a couple of money shots, I guess you could say. I don't have a cool montage with some cool music or anything, but I thought it'd be neat instead of taking the bed, putting it together in a room, and then like laying on it or something like that. I thought it'd be cool and a little bit different to bring all the furniture or the pieces that I'll build in the future and bring it outside into this nice big field or yard and take a couple of shots of it. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, if you like woodworking and like talking about God and His Word and what Christ did on the cross for us, please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.